And good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 for Tuesday, August 2nd, 2022. The market for the most part today ended up being or feeling as if it was more of an inside day rather than a day that broke to new highs or lows. Although the market did early, you know, we reached its low early in the session before turning and heading for much higher levels and getting itself back above uh, 4,100 and then dropping back yet again. So where are we? What are we doing? What's going on? Again, I am leaving the views as is for right now, although I am continuing to run two side by side. And they both have the same uh, result but it's going to depend on which one actually is in force will, will also dictate how far the market has potentially to fall. So let's kind of dive in here. So again, the first count that I'm showing right here shows that this is minor wave one of an intermediate C wave. So in other words, starting at the top, I believe that we have reached the highs for now and that we are in a longer term corrective phase. Now, being that, all of the degrees of this correction all need to form ABC, corrective formation structures. So we remain in the process, in my opinion, of putting in the C wave, the intermediate C wave, which would then one degree up complete the primary A wave. So again, I'm looking for an ABC on an intermediate degree, then an ABC on a primary degree, and ABC on a cycle degree. And that in turn will complete the uh, super cycle wave four. So back to where we are. The second count that I'm running now, uh, being that the count where we would drop lower uh, eliminated one count where that would have been that this was minor wave three and this would have all been part of minor wave four. Um, in all honesty, it could still be, but it's kind of getting out of hand. It's getting way too big in terms of a uh, structure, in terms of the structure. So I've moved it to a minor two, which gave it more upside potential. A fourth wave can go 50%. But when it starts heading up towards anything higher, it's kind of breaking boundaries that would suggest that it's not a fourth wave. So anyway, the the, the intensity of the buying and the intensity of the structure uh, continues to suggest that it's either an ABC minor wave two, which would produce a much stronger minor third wave decline. And that decline would initially be expected to take out 36.39. That would be the initial move. Not in one day, but the initial move should take out 36.39 on its way down to much lower levels. So having said all of that, let's kind of take a peek to what we got going on. In fact, I need to put back another upside count and stay with me because I need to go out to, I think I can, I need to go out to here. I've got to put in this whole, nope, it's not going to be that. It's going to be, sorry about this. I just noticed that I somehow got rid of it and it's important that we see it so we can put this whole move into perspective. I'll go right there, and I'm just going to leave that right there for right now, and we'll go back and look at it in a minute. So the other count is that this C wave, this intermediate C wave, completed here, because as you can see, we are able to count five waves down. I'm putting them in a minute degree to form the minor, but it can shift up, and these can be minor degree to form this the intermediate. I think it's counting too fast. And it's not giving enough room to the market to actually uh, unfold in the way that I believe it will. Um, but I'm running them because I'm going to let the market tell me. Now, if it's the C wave and this is an ABC to form the 
intermediate A wave. So it's intermediate wave A of primary wave B because this would be intermediate wave C of primary wave A. So we would be in a primary B wave, which would open the door for much higher levels here in the S&P. And we would have to wait and see what happens. But what would happen inside of it would be an ABC for an intermediate wave A, an ABC for an intermediate wave B, not taking out that low, and then getting a C wave back up, which I would anticipate that it could take us pretty high. It could really go. Now, what is congruent with both, whether it's a minor third from a lower high or a primary C wave from a higher high, both are going to be devastating. Both are going to be crushing. Both are going to really slam a lot of positions, a lot, and it'll do damage all the way down. So again, whatever's going to do it will be so clean and so clear that the only path right now is down. And so there won't be this up and down question of like, well, this is bullish. Well, that's bullish because it's going to be, I, in my opinion, it'll be very clear that, that there'll be so much confusion or whatever that it's just down. Anyway, having said all of that, let's start to take a look. I'm leaving this as minor wave one. This is an ABC up for a minor wave two. I'm going to come down to the four hour chart. I'm going to open it up. Here we have the A and the B of minor wave two, and we're in the C wave. Now, if I'm counting correctly, one, two, three, four. The fifth wave extends. And in that, one, two, and then I believe this could be wave three, and this could be wave four, and we're in the fifth. Now, what is a little bit hesitant there? is that we got up, I'm going to go back now, I'm going to drop down to the hourly chart so I can show you this. We we did get up to 41.43. This high is 41.47, so four bucks, four bucks, we missed it. Could this have, or does it suggest that we, that this small fifth wave, right, to complete the C wave failed by four bucks? Three, four bucks, did not create a new high. And because I'll tell you, look at that. The rejection right off of it was pretty strong and carried it pretty much back down to the lows from this morning. Now, we managed to get ourselves back up, but not back above 4,100. We're now, the market is bidding itself up a very little bit. There's, yeah, somebody somebody just wants to get flat or whatever the situation is. But if we see continued downside and it starts to break below, then it's going to put more support in the fact that that did complete the uh, fifth wave of C and in turn the minor two. And we should then begin to drop pretty strongly. And that would be what the expectation would be. What? How's the market going to tell us it's all over? It's just going to go. It's going to start going. And when that happens, I have to tell you, the mindset you really got to put in is you go with the flow. You go with what the numbers are telling you. You go with where your points of control are, where the demand is, is taking it, where the next value area is going to be, where these buyers are going to step back in. Now, I think it's going to be, I think it could be very surprising when it happens. So it catches people off guard, just the intensity. So that's why I continue to say it could be something coming in out of the news. Really rattle things. It could be, we still are getting a lot of earnings reports. Uh, AMD reported this afternoon. Um, not actually great, not terrible uh, stock closed at 99.29 now it's reopening at 94 so you know putting it back into perspective but it's not trading down 10 or 20 dollars <laughs> um paypal didn't blow the doors off but they made money versus losing money so stocks up 11 dollars so again we're seeing the activity but what would have to be made clear is what is something out there 
is going to say that this is all done. We're going down. I don't, but reality tells me that I'm not really expecting that right now. I'm expecting more that what might be happening here, if this is not a failure, right? So again, if it is, it needs to turn and go. It just go, get itself below 4,079 and just start heading lower. And I mean lower, just start peeling it off. And so I would expect it to get back towards 4,000 pretty quickly versus getting it back above 4,100. So again, we're on the four hour chart, I'd be looking for today, that secondary, that, that afternoon sell came down again and kissed the four hour 20 and it held it. And now we're back above it. And we're now getting ready to give a good old test of 4,100. So let's push, let's push. They're coming in, they're buying the NASI, et cetera, et cetera. So you let them do what they're going to do, but it needs to turn and make, needs to break that. Next up, it would have to break the 50 EMA and the 50 SMA, and those are at 430 to 4, 439, 4,039. Then we have support of 4,017. Then we have the... Um, four hour 200 EMA at 39.48. So again, I would think an initial initial drop down to 39.50 would give a pretty strong signal that it's all done. We're now heading lower. That's the part that's going to be important. If we are heading lower in a primary B wave, I'm not looking for new lows. If we're heading lower in a minor third wave, I'm looking for new lows below 36, 39, and then some. But I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. We still have a lot to cover before we would be doing that. So what I am suggesting and continuing to suggest is that you can trade according to what your uh, numbers are telling you. I think that's smart. But I... I still believe that we need to start adopting a non-biased opinion. We're not bullish. We're not bearish. We trade the number. That's really what everything is right now. It is quantitative. These are computers. These are algorithms that are running at all hours determining value and where value, value could be found. And that comes via market profile and order flow volume profiles which give you the point of control, give you daily area highs and lows. And those shift. They shift with the market as the market determines where that value area is going to be. If there are a ton of buyers, it's, that value area is going to push higher. Then as you move higher, there have been other areas that will be affected in terms of that's where the market's going to go. And those are possibly naked points of control. And you might have to go out to a weekly chart to find them. Because it's been a while since we've been up here. You got to go back to May to start to find some of the higher areas where the market found value either to buy or sell. Okay, so it is actually just becoming more technical and just following the number. And as they break, it's understanding where that supply and demand is coming. If they're pushing lower, and so the demand is to the downside. You know you can pick because you're going to be trading off a five-minute chart. You still have the same basics. You still have the same point of control, value very low, et cetera, et cetera, and the other levels that fall into place underneath all of it. So it is possible. And it is cleaner without having to determine what's coming out. Was that earnings report? Was that bullish or bearish? What's it doing to the stock, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so for tomorrow, I'm leaving open the potential that we could just turn around, zip, go back above, get above 41.34, get above 41.51, heading up towards 41.85. Then we have the daily 200 EMA at 42.18. That sounds like a pretty neat target to me. Could it get there? Sure, it could. And it could complete the whole pattern. Previous fourth wave of one lesser degree is at 42.02. Well, can it get to 18? Yeah, it can. The numbers tell you that. And if the buyers are going to be in demand and they're just going to take, then it could get there. I don't care 
how they arrive at that number. Why would I need to take the time to realize, oh, we're at 4,100, we've got potential to run up to 4,218, and they start buying it. Well, you jump on board. On your lower levels, you will figure out where the value areas are, and you'll be able to trade to them. All right. I'm going to, I'm leaving open that potential. Again, it's all laid out. If we start to drop, then look for at least, at least on that hourly chart, look for the breaks of the moving averages. And to quickly review, right now, we are basically hovering just below the, the 8, the 20, and the 50s on the hourly chart. So we've gotten below them. Hourly, not a great sign. We need to get back above. The buyers are intent. They're going to have to start showing because this is showing resistance right now. See how flat they are? It's resistance. So downside seems to be a little bit more open and there's nothing here. Nothing here. So we could drop quickly. Okay. I'm going to leave it all right there. Our next update will be on Wednesday, August 3rd.